welcome to the Mousy Makes podcast. I'm Helen and I am very happy that you've come to spend a bit of time with me today. I live in Durham in the northeast of England and I spend a good deal of my time making things or going out for walks and I love sharing them with you because that's, that's really what my podcast is all about. Um, today I am going to show you some of the books that are on my craft room bookshelves here and I am also going to introduce you to a new slow stitching project that I've started uh, just very recently but just before that uh, I promised that I would show you um, the kind of the final result of my 100 day project that I completed a couple of weeks or so ago. Um, finally the um, frame that I ordered came so I spent an entire morning trimming around the edges of the 100 little drawings that I'd made and um, and then sticking them onto the backing card that I'd measured to fit into the frame. It took me over two and a half hours just to do that, just to do the cutting and the uh, sticking but um, I did it uh, very carefully trying to make sure it was all in line and everything and then finally it went into the frame and a little bit of help from my husband to put a new uh, hanger, metal hanger on the back and then it was ready to put up on the wall. So here we are, hopefully you can see that now, it is definitely in pride of place on my craft room wall. Well, in one of the lovely comments that one of you lovely viewers wrote recently, you said that you'd love to see what I had on my craft room bookshelves. So that's what I thought we'd do today. Uh, though it would be rather a long episode if I went through every shelf. So I'll just do a bit today and I'll come back to it again in some future podcasts. It was quite hard to decide how to do it, whether just to take a couple of shelves and just look at all the books on those particular shelves or whether to look at a category and just show you all of my knitting books and then another time crochet books and things. But I've decided to just to maybe do one or two shelves today so that you get to see quite an assortment. And um, so if you just wait there a moment, I'll get the books down from the top shelf. Right, so here are the books that are on the top shelf of my bookcase in the craft room. And the first one is this one by Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Um, it's a very amusing book, just a collection of little anecdotes and thoughts. Meditations for women who knit too much. She's a very good writer, Stephanie Pearl McPhee. And yes, she really sees the funny side of being obsessed about knitting in this book. So, very amusing. I have read that one. Uh, this is the first of many in this 20 to make series that I've got. So, felt Christmas decorations. And there's some lovely ideas in here. And I have made some of the things in here. And I very likely will do again. So, a lovely little book, that. Um, next, another 20 to make. And uh, this is Knitted Fruit. And again, I have made lots of these things. Uh, when my nieces were younger, I made them a whole set of fruit and vegetables. So here's the vegetables book as well. Knitted vegetables. Lots of brilliant. Oh, I love that mushroom. Yeah, great. Really good patterns. Very, very easy to follow. And... Uh, Oh, parsnip, but that was one of my favourites. That was really good. Yeah, so excellent books there. Oh, I have this book here, which uh, I haven't seen for a long while. I have made some of the things in here. They're all tiny things made from felt. So quite fiddly, but rather nice if you like making tiny, uh, sort of Japanese style, I think. Japanese style tiny things. So nice little book. Tiny person there. Yeah. And oh, here's another um, 20 to make, this time knitted flowers. 
that yet and I have made quite a few of these oh and the cactus and flower I made a lot of cacti daffodil yeah really yeah some lovely patterns in there I like that oh and back to the Japanese style felt things the cuter book yeah these are even tinier things so we've got all the all the patterns in and uh, yeah, clear instructions they're not hard to do as I say that actually the fiddliest part about them is stuffing them so oh I like that little monkey <laughs> look at the frog yeah so yeah nice little book there oh another Stephanie Pearl McPhee book things I learned from knitting whether I wanted to or not yeah it's kind of lessons that you can learn yeah knitting is still trying to teach me that no matter how well you knit looking at your work too closely isn't helpful it's like kissing with your eyes open nobody looks good that close up <laughs> yeah that's oh that's a really fun little book yeah I like that uh here is a book that uh, this is the first one, probably not the only one, that I confess I haven't read yet. So I will have to um, get myself round to reading this book. Yeah, so different writers writing about knitting. I mean, it should be really interesting, shouldn't it? And another Stephanie Pearl McPhee book. Amazing thing, the amazing thing about the way it goes. Yeah, it's, um, I guess, not entirely just about knitting. Um, I can't remember that one so much. That's not so memorable, that one, although I have read it. Here we have another 20 to make, this time some knitted fast food, which, again, I have made lots of the things from here. And they're great little patterns. Yeah, so Susie John's the author of that and here we go oh here's a Noro knitting pattern book uh, lots of patterns again I have I have done one or two things from there another 20 to make mini Christmas co crochet so it's got, it has got some very lovely things in it there, yeah so, and <laughs> 20 to make knitted cakes this time. Uh, I don't think I've done so many of these, actually. I've done one or two. So it has been used. Oh, look at those. Oh, yes, I made those Swiss rolls. Lovely. And this time, 20 to make mini Christmas knits. There's loads of these 20 to make books. Yes, and I've definitely made a few of these things. Oh, especially that little mouse made that little fairy mouse a few times look at that so cute tiny sweaters oh yeah and another 20 to make this time things out of pom-poms which I don't think I've made any of the things out of here yet so there's one to put on my must use pile so but it looks a lovely little book uh, here's a book by Jem Weston, who I first came across uh, when I went to Yarndale and really like her. She, has a, she definitely has a style of her own and I have made, um, hmm, I've made one or two of the things out there, so I made those little hearts. And, oh, I've made these slippers, I made quite a few of these slippers, they're great they are. Um, made quite a few of those there we go quite a few of those for gifts and they were always well received you, you knit the sole but you felt it so you have to knit it bigger than the person's foot and it did work out okay so yeah good little book here uh, here's a book that I really like the idea of but I've never actually made anything out of it yeah I mean look at those little those fingerless mitts with the butterfly in the palm of your hand. Beautiful. So I've never actually made anything out of that one. 
And here is a book. I think somebody gave me this one to knit the clangers, which I have made one. Yes, I've made one of these as a gift, but nothing else from here. So, yeah, I may get to that or not. Uh, oh, here's a just a book of knitting patterns, which I don't think I've ever used. No. Um, oh, this is one of the books that I bought when I was first trying to learn to crochet. And I didn't actually find it that helpful. That one. Goodness, this is taking a while, isn't it? I might only have to do the top shelf, I think, today. Uh, <laughs> right, the Kirsty Allsop craft book, which I think was a gift. And it has all sorts of, well, crafts. Yeah, as it says, craft. What have we got? We've got, yeah, so we've got needle crafts and textiles, paper, food, garden flower gift, gift ideas. And um, there are lots of lovely things in here. I don't think I've actually used it to make anything. Uh, anyway, so it is a nice enough book, but I just haven't used it. And oh, <laughs> another Stephanie Pearl McPhee book. Again, more, um, yeah, kind of amusing, an amusing look at knitting. And which is and it's also useful as well. That's got some useful things in it, useful tips in it. Uh, here's a book which um, shows you how to incorporate beads into knitted projects. And I have made one or two of the things in here. I uh, can't find them right now. But yeah, nice, nice little book that explains things quite well. And then I have these knitting cards, which I thought was a good idea because I thought, you know, the idea is you can just pop it into your project bag. Um, oops, show you the cards. Here, yeah, so just a, a little card. It's, it's a really nice idea. You can just pop that into your card, but I've never actually used it. So a little booklet comes with it. There we go. And what have we got here? Oh, this must have been a freebie with a magazine, I think. The Pocket Book of Baby Knits. Haven't actually made anything out of it. Oh, this is one I've used quite a lot. 75 birds, butterflies and beautiful creatures. Yes, I've made quite a lot of the things out of this book. So, and that is knitting and crochet there. So when I first bought this book, um, I could only knit and then I learnt to crochet from my mum and it meant that I could do the rest of the things in the book. Well, I haven't done everything in it, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> this is a book. Oh, not a craft book, just a drawing book. Let's draw happy people. So I've got, I bought a few drawing books over the years and this is one that I have used a little bit, but not very much. And here's one. I've had this one quite a long time. The knitted teddy bear. Quite old fashioned looking teddies in here. Oops. And yeah, I did make I did make one of them once. Sorry about the noise on the table there. So that's nice. Uh, another book of toys. This time by Tracy Chapman. And again, I have made, yeah, one or two things out of here. Oh, I made that doll, actually. So, yeah, I've got some nice patterns in it. I just tend to make smaller things these days. And then one here, which I think is a lovely book by Rebecca Danger. 50 yards of fun so they're just small toys that don't take up much yarn and use it leftovers to make but I haven't actually made anything out of it I don't think anyway can't remember and then I think oh this might have been a gift to me so the Bruins the cartoon the Bruins uh, somebody has made a, a book of knitting patterns 
for making the different characters, which I just love the idea of this. And I keep meaning to make some for my uncle Alan, who lives in Australia, and who is a big fan of the Bruins and always has been. I haven't quite got round to that yet. So, yes, anyway, there we go. Uh, the Bruins. So that is everything from the top shelf. And I think I better stop there. I think I better show you the second top shelf another time. So I also wanted to tell you briefly a little bit about a couple of books that I've enjoyed recently. The first one is this one, a non-fiction book called The Epic uh, Voyages of Maud Berridge by Sally Berridge. Uh, Maud, who is the author's great-grandmother, was the wife of a sea captain called Henry Berridge, who made regular trips between England and Australia, and I think San Francisco as well, and yeah, and who were transporting passengers and goods. Uh, Maud accompanied her husband on some of his trips, and she kept diaries of her experiences, and these are printed in full in the book. Um, it begins by setting the scene, explaining a bit about shipping and sailors in late Victorian times, and um, just to give just some context to the diaries. And it's all very interesting and easy to read. Of course, I've just loved reading Maud's diaries. Although she suffered from seasickness a lot, it didn't seem to dampen her spirits. Uh, one of the things that I liked in particular is that she often mentions that she spent all morning knitting. She must have had to take quite a lot of yarn and projects with her because a trip to Australia in 1893 took about three months. Anyway, I can highly recommend the book if you're interested in history or reading people's diaries. The second book recommendation is one that I actually listened to unabridged on audiobook and it's called A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. The novel is set in... Winchester in the south of England and in the 1920s and it focuses on the work of the broderers of Winchester Cathedral uh, and it also addresses the problems of there being so many single women following the loss of all the men in the First World War. I thought it was excellent, it gave me a real feel for what it was like to be a single woman at that time and also for the various prejudices that were carried over from Victorian times or just all those imposed by men. It's a really readable, enjoyable story. So I told you at the start that I was going to introduce you to my latest slow stitching project. Well, in the first place, I was recently introduced to a website called Haptic and Hue, which is all about exploring cloth and the impact it has on our lives. And they do an occasional audio podcast. It was listening to an episode called A Feeling of Resilience that first got me thinking. And it was alarming to hear the statistics about fabric and garment making and wastage. One of which is that in 2020, it's estimated that in the UK, about 67 million items of clothing were disposed of. The podcast got me thinking about how I could perhaps do a better job of prolonging the life of the fabric items in my own home. And I took another look through a pile of discarded clothing that's been sitting around in my craft room for a while, waiting for me to do something with it. It was interesting on the pod podcast to hear about the different cultural attitudes to repaired clothing. In the UK, in past generations, people wearing obviously darned and patched clothing were thought of as somewhat inferior. Whereas in India, repaired and re repurposed cloth and clothing has always been a cause for celebration and reflects the belief of many people that we ourselves are continually reborn, rather like repurposing fabric. In that same podcast, one of the people being interviewed was Claire Wellesley-Smith, who's a textile artist and an organiser of community creative projects that involve textiles. I love the fact that Claire talked about how textile items carry stories and an obvious example is a patchwork quilt made out of clothing no longer used. And when it was mentioned that Claire had written a book called Resilient Stitch I just couldn't resist buying it and I haven't been disappointed with it. I enjoyed it so much and I've read it all and that I've now bought her previous book called Slow Stitch and it was really these two books that prompted me to start my new stitching project. 
In both books, Claire writes about her stitch journal, equivalent to an artist's sketchbook where you might practice a bit of drawing every day. Claire does a bit of stitching at the start of every day, sometimes just a couple of minutes and sometimes longer. She's got no particular plan and the journal is all about just enjoying the process without any worry about an outcome. This really appealed to me, uh, but I decided to do it slightly different to the one in the book, which the author is making as one long strip, adding pieces of fabric as and when she needs it. I thought I would make a project that was perhaps a bit more portable and manageable in size, so I've actually made it as a sort of cloth book. I chose to have it A4 size, which is, I think, slightly larger than letter paper size in the USA. And I used some factory fabric reject uh, seconds calico that I had in my craft room. It's got various marks on it. and in the, But in the spirit of my recent thinking, I've decided to embrace its imperfections. If I fill all the pages, I can always add more pages. I've got no plan. Uh, but so far, I've started adding some scraps of the hand-dyed felt that I love, uh, a piece of the first felt that I actually made, and a little bit of Shetland sheep wool that I picked up from the ground when I was in the Shetland Islands last year, and which has been in one of my coat pockets since then. So now it's got a special place. On another page, I'm using the slow stitching kit that uh, was I was gifted recently from my lovely YouTube and Instagram friend Jeanette from Crafty Clegg's Creations podcast. So that's going to be um, that's going to yeah going to look really good too. I already know that this stitch journal is a wonderfully relaxing, mindful activity, and my only problem is trying not to do it for too long when I've got other things to get on with. <clears throat> I just love the way it slows me right down and takes my mind away from feeling worried or unsettled. Slow stitching is definitely a very calming process and I can highly recommend it. Well, I'm just going to finish uh, by reading a poem that was included at the end of the podcast that I mentioned. And it's called Mending by Hazel Hall. Here are old things, fraying edges, ravelling threads, and here are scraps of new goods, needles and thread, and an expectant thimble, a pair of silver-toothed scissors, thimble on finger, new thread through an eye. Needle, do not linger, hurry as you ply, if you ever would be through, hurry, scurry, fly. Here are patches, felled edges, darned threads, strengthening old utility, pending the coming of the new. Yes, I have been mending, but also I have been enacting a little travesty on life. Right, well, I think that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed listening and looking at my new project and my books and things. Um, I will be back again very soon. So thanks for watching today and take care. Okay then, bye!